Hey guys, this is Financial Fitness and today I've got two very important things I need to share with you. One is breaking news and one is news that I was hoping would go away. But it's coming to haunt us. And I just want to keep you posted. That's what I want to do. So let's go. Hey guys, if you're on Facebook and you can't hit that like button on, on the YouTube, stop what you're doing, go over to YouTube, Figure out your password. <laughs> I had people call me and say, hey, I like your video. I said, did you hit the like button? No, it won't let me. It's because you're not on YouTube. So help me out. Go over there. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Let's go. And we'll keep you posted and up to date. Woo! So the first thing is the drought. This is the, the news that I was hoping would kind of fix itself with some rain. But as it turns out, I'm going to roll a clip. Roll that footage. So we are in a severe drought situation. The darker the color on the map the more severe that area is. So my part of uh, California is that portion right here. So California and all of the West is in a bad drought. I've covered some ground on this and it's the real deal. It's really hard to find out what good news is and bad, I mean, there's so much crap news out there, it's hard to, to figure out what's real, but I'm gonna go ahead and say this is the real thing. And wheat is a big deal. There's tons of stuff made from wheat, barley, like 80, over 80% 80 of our barley comes from there. Uh, it, it's massive, massive thing that's happening that we're not seeing yet. So, you know, that's the future prices. We're in today's prices, there's no change. You know, it takes like three or four months and maybe longer for people to figure out that, oh wow, all the wheat burn up in the drought. So that's gonna be a problem. So if you need any of that stuff, like, I like oatmeal. That's my first two meals every day is it involves oatmeal. I'm going to get a little bit, suck the air out of it, and to put it away. Now, that might be a smart thing. So that's, that's something that I'm really going to start watching better. Uh, I would assume food prices are going to go up even more. I'm figuring on about 40 or 50% of our paycheck in the end. But let's keep going. I need to talk about my... Seafood shortage. I didn't know anything about a seafood shortage. This is happening coming out today. And it's not because there's less seafood in the water. It's the same problem I'm having with my tubing. So they can't find employees. It's they're just quitting. I'm not sure if it's for more wages somewhere else. So the, the less desired people, there's a lot of people that don't want to mess with fish every day and shrimp. And I get it. Some people don't mind it. We need those people bad. But they're just not wanting to do it. I was listening. I'm just going to show you the footage. It's Roll impossible it. to be in three places at once. But Nate Phillips is trying to do just that. Fishing on his family's boat, running his new clam shack, and cutting the day's catch in his fish market. I've got two guys here besides myself. Normally I have seven. It's the same in all three locations. The seafood industry, like so many others, is experiencing a labor shortage. And it's currently high season in Greenport, Long Island, where seafood is in demand. U.S. seafood prices are up 2.5% since last year, the fastest pace in years. This should be good news for Phillips, but he says customers often leave frustrated and without making a purchase. With little staff, people are forced to wait. The U.S. imports up to 85% of the seafood we eat. But with slowdowns in international trade, there's even more pressure on U.S. operations to make up the loss. In Louisiana, it's the tail end of the brown shrimp season. But a lousy harvest and fewer workers means less business for places like Louisiana New Pack Shrimp Company. We have to use temporary agencies to get people to come in, and it's hard to get them even today. Carl Turner runs the plant and says many workers are either collecting unemployment or left the industry for good. People want to work in different industries, cleaner industries. And it's a challenge to attract people to work in the shrimp processing plant. 
In the Gulf Coast bayous, Faith Family Shrimp Company owns this dock and five boats. But the family sold two because they couldn't find anyone to run them. If I would have known what I know now, five shrimp boats, a big shrimp dock facility, I would have had five sons. It's a grueling, messy, monotonous business, but one that takes skill. We'll start people out at a really good pay, a really good hourly pay. And in a week or two, they quit. And we're like, what's going on? And it's, it's very hard to replace them. This is where Philip says he needs to be. But the lack of workers leaves him to choose between working on land or at sea. So food prices are going up, up and away. Seafood's about to go up because we can't get people to go back to work. And I'm sure if they paid more money, they'd probably go back to work. That's the way it usually works. But when they pay more money, it's going to cost us more money. So <clears throat> we're in a pickle. This is a big deal. But as the very second I see something happen, I'm going to let you know about it. Thanks, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.